Biggie, what are you looking at? Is that your excited face? Because you know it's another weekly reading vlog. Hello everybody. My name's Biggie Cobain and welcome to another Kill 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 weekly reading vlog. Uh, I, I don't read because I'm a cat, but my human does read. So when I'm not bunny kicking him, and when I'm not lying on his books, as I am doing right now, sometimes he reads. Oh no, yes, no, not my belly. Please, ah, uh, you're getting quite sharp now, you're going to draw blood. That's it, clean yourself. Anyway, welcome to another weekly reading vlog. It is Monday. Ah, I'm scared, 1st of June. And um, I'm currently reading a couple of things. So I'm reading The Bridge by Ian Banks. Um, but there's a lot of Scots dialect in it, so then I switch it out as my bedtime book, just because I get bored otherwise. Uh, and I'm reading We Can Remember It For You Wholesale, Volume 5 of the collected short stories of Philip K. Dick that the cat is currently guarding. Um, Volume number two is also called We Can Remember It For You Wholesale, which is quite strange. I guess the only other news at the moment, finishing off my radio show for this week, me and my friend Dave have been doing some work on our new album for the, for the ilk. And uh, we've got a guy called Steve Smith working with us to master the tracks. And the first two tracks are mastered, which is very exciting. <laughs> my cat, ladies and gentlemen. What? Oh, hello. I can see your little face. Hello, it's Tuesday the 2nd of June. Oh, that reminds me then, that means I can go in and change my Asda shop now. Biggie's just coming in, aren't you Biggs? I think he's waiting for Daddy to stop recording because Daddy's had his guitar out. I've been, um, oh fuck me, I've got a bad back today as well. Um, I've been recording lead guitar to a couple of my songs that we're doing on the new Elk album. So hopefully those are finished now. Um, we've got two tracks that have already been mixed. One currently being mixed, and this will make about another three that are ready to be mixed. Which means we've got at least an EP ready, and we've got some more stuff we're working on. Um, it's just slow and steady wins the race really, isn't it? But yeah, so those are over with Dave, so I can relax a bit there. Uh, cat has just been very distracting. I'm currently re listening to my audiobook of The Fifth Elephant by Terry Pratchett. I'm on part 14 of 22 and I only started yesterday. So that's good. That's my reread for Rereadathon and there will be um, a full review of that coming soon. And I'm still cracking on with Ian Banks, The Bridge, nearly at the end now. And uh, We Can Remember It For You Wholesale by Philip K. Dick, which I'm not nearly at the end at. I'm about a quarter of the way through, something like that. Um, but yeah, should be good. I think that's all I've got for you guys. I've got quite a lot to film, actually. I feel terrible as well. Hello. It is uh, it's quarter to seven in the morning and I haven't gone to bed. I'm probably not going to now. Um, but I have been being productive, so I've managed to record and edit most of next week's radio show. And I've caught up with all of my booktube editing as well. And actually, while I've been doing it, because I've been... Uh, basically been downsizing. Um, I want to read at some point. There was a philosopher. I can't remember his name now. PewDiePie was talking about him of all people. He was this philosopher who basically got rid of all of his possessions and used to live in like rags. And I think he lived in a barrel. What was it? What? No, Dionysus is the god of drinking, right? What was his name? Oh, I was close. He was Diogenes. He's uh, Diogenes the Cynic and the founder of Cynic uh, philosophy. But um. Yeah, he got rid of all of his stuff basically because it made him happier. Now, I'm not going to go extreme and get rid of all of my stuff, but I also see the parallels with this whole Marie Kondo thing. And um, so, yeah, I posted a while back to say I'm downsizing my book collection, so I've just been like slowly listing them all on eBay. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, at the moment I've got 773 active listings, which would, if they all sell, £4,641.62. It's very, very exciting. Obviously, they won't all sell. Um, but yeah, so then if I look at my overview here, £655 of sales in the, in the last 31 days, 1750 in the last 90 days, uh, and 2400 in the last 12 months. But um, basically, obviously that number's kind of creeping up, um, but now I can sell from home and uh, post from home and stuff as well, so that's not too much of a problem. Um, but yeah, so now I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start like flipping. So um, for example, I've been bidding on stuff. Uh, you'll see in my halls, they'll come through. But um, so let's have a look. 
How do I? Um, so I've but I've bought. I've already won one of me one of my bids. Let's have a look. Well, so what am I bidding on at the moment? So at the moment, I'm winning a, a bid here for a twenty buck bundle of Stephen King of hardback and softbacks, most hardbacks first editions. Uh, so I've bid ten pound fifty plus nine pound fifty postage, although I'm willing to go up to thirty pound total, so an extra ten pound. There's four days, fourteen hours left on that one. And then here we have Isaac Asimov, and it's a job lot of Isaac Asimov books. Okay, so on the Asimov books here, I'm winning at uh, 199 plus 320 postage, which is about a pound a book. But like, I was listing some of my old Asimov books, and they're at least like five, six pounds per book. Um, but also, of this auction, three of them are ones I haven't read. Or oh, actually, what's that? For? No, yeah, three of them are ones I haven't read, and I want to read all of Asimov's stuff. So it's like a good way of building up my TBR as well by, you know, targeting authors like that, uh, that I can then sell on, I can read and pretty much immediately sell on for a profit. Um, and the King, again, there are 20 King books, and there are going to be at least a few in there that will go for a fiver. Um, and there are, I think, two or three in that that I haven't read as well. Uh, obviously, I'm then sitting on these books for a while, so that's why I'm kind of doing, like, experimenting with this now, because I've been working super hard, so I have some extra money. So I can try doing this stuff, you know. I'm going to see how it goes and buy a few of these job lot things and see if I make a profit. Because you've got to bear in mind I have to pay eBay fees, I have to pay PayPal fees, and I have to pay postage fees as well. So even if I sell a book for £5, I'm actually probably out of that I'm making £4.20 and it's going to cost me £2.99 to post it. But I have figured out a, 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 a plan of attack now where um, my minimum listing is £3.99 or £2.99 for really small books. So I always should make about a pound like per book so that means that I can then afford to bid up to a pound per book if that makes sense you know so we'll see and anything above that is profit see how it goes but yeah I'm just keeping an eye on these job lots and seeing what comes up and then occasionally bidding on them so we've got those okay so yeah orders here yes yeah, so a job lot of ladybird books looking for a new home because these, again, these are super cheap to post as well. Each one of these will cost me about £1.40 to post each one. Um, so I don't have to sell them for a huge amount. I'll sell them for 2 99 each as a minimum. Yes, yeah, so I paid 4 99 plus 3 25 postage. So 8 25 And there are 1, 2, 3, 4. There are 11 of these books. So again, if I make a pound on each one of them, I've made some profit um, but also some of them you never know like they um, some of them are like super rare so like for example I've been keeping an eye on I'll give away my secret here but Monster Blood 4 a Goosebumps book um, I can I sold one of those for I think 17 99 and um, some, some sometimes people put them up like bids and they'll go up to like four or five quid or something so I can buy them and then resell them um, so that's kind of the plan. I'm also looking at signed stuff, so I was looking at some signed J.K. Rowling stuff, but um, I couldn't get it below a tenner for a signed copy of a book, and it's like, I reckon I could sell it for 30, you know, but I don't I don't want to get stuck with it. I'd rather, because like these Ladybird books, for example, I'll read all of these as well. I'm, I'm actually quite looking forward to getting them. Biggie's on the keyboard. Biggie, what are you doing? You're nuzzling my knee, are you? Yes. Oh... Hello, are you inside the speaker again? Are you? How is it in there? Is it alright? I like how it's just biggie shaped. You having fun, are you? Such a strange cat. Oh, are you coming out? I have started watching Game of Thrones again from the beginning, so this could take a while. Series 1, Episode 2. Hey, Biggie. Oh, no. Are you coming to attack my book again? Yes. Ha, belly, 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 belly. I'm on Season 2, Episode 3. It's currently Thursday. I'm having a bit of a mental health day, to be honest. Um, well, I made the mistake of going online and just 
people are so stupid, man. And it, I'm, it's getting really depressing, like, just seeing some of the stuff that people are getting up to. Like, people hijacking Black, Black Lives Matter to peddle their own agendas. People going on about... Like, like I saw someone say, like, oh, the two metre apart thing is because we've all been implanted with computer chips and they can only tell who you are if you're two metres apart from someone else. And apart from the fact that that's ridiculous, you, you can track phones to an accuracy of a foot, 30 centimetres. And like, my phone's here now. So, and like, you could have a room full of people all with their phones, and you would know exactly who was there. And to an accuracy of, of ah, I don't know. Anyway, it just makes me sad because then, you know, people see stuff like that, and then people die because the disease gets spread more, you know? I mean, to be fair, it is depressing when you start to think about it because somebody did, like, I see people saying, like, oh, well, we didn't do this for the flu. And it's like, yeah, but the flu is, like, less communicable and less deadly. And they were trying to prove that the flu kills more people than coronavirus. And at least in the UK, it doesn't. And then they tried to bring in, ah, but excess deaths. And then even when you f factor in excess deaths, coronavirus has caused more excess deaths as well. So, so far in the last three months, COVID has killed more people in the UK than the, have died in the biggest flu season in the UK. By a factor of 30 it was. And then if you factor in excess deaths, we've had 12,000 more excess deaths in the UK this year than we had in the entire year that was the worst year for excess deaths. So, and that's, and that's with social distancing and isolation and lockdown. So imagine if we hadn't done that, you know what I mean? So just really fucking, oh, I just hate people, man, I hate them. Because, as I say, then, it's people like that that then go out and spread the illness. Like, some of my friends have posted loads of pictures and videos of them playing on a children's play park, and I'm like, yeah, legally, you're not allowed to do that. If a police officer had walked past, they could have all, all had on-the-spot fines for it. But it, it also annoys me, not just because of that, and, like, I kind of worry about them being, like, trying not to get a fine. Like, at least if you're, I don't know, breaking social distancing laws by meeting someone outside your household, they're not going to know if you walk past. Whereas if you're, like, obnoxiously doing something that's against the rules. But also, I just feel for then, like, mothers of kids who are then, like, being to their, their kids being, like, can I go on the seesaw? And the mum's like, no, you're not allowed. And the kid's like, but those ladies are on the roundabout. And the mum's like, well, they're not allowed either. But, like, I'm sure they just didn't know. But, I don't know, like, rules like that are there for a reason. Because if people use the stuff like that, they have metal surfaces. So, the, the virus could stick around for longer, I don't know. I, it just makes me sad. So that was a little ranty room. I've been eating onion, homemade onion salad with poppadoms and mango chutney, that's been nice. And eating these little... My friend sent me some little uh, brownies for my birthday, so that's nice. And I got these in the post today, which I need to do. I'm going to do a haul and a full video on these. These are little ladybird books. Basically, I just bought these as a job lot. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to read them all. Um, and obviously review them all. But then I'm going to do a video where I'm going to rank them in order of best to worst. As much as you can do that. Um, and then I'm just going to sell them on on my eBay store. So um, that's kind of why I bought them, is to sell them on. But, you know... I like Ladybird books, so I'm quite happy to to read them while they're here. I was maybe going to go meet someone later, but as, again, I'm not really in a peopley mood, so... Plus, the weather isn't that great today. I think she's about to say Dracaris. Go on. Oh, he's knackered. Oh, also knackered. There we go. Set him on fire then. Oh, oh lad. It is Friday. I have a little man next to me. He's trying to sleep, I think. Uh, I'm quite tired. I've been on the coffee. It is five to two in the afternoon. Um, yeah, just being productive because I know I think this evening I've got some plans. I'm also meant to be interviewing someone later, but I need to message her and check it's still happening, if not potentially rearrange because I've got... Well, it's mad, isn't it, that in the COVID days, like, I've just got so used to just being at home alone all the time and being productive constantly, that now if I want to do anything, even if I'm just at home by myself, if I have a plan that's going to take a few hours, I need to make time for it, you know? But yeah, I'm cracking on with work. I've also been reading some more of We Can Remember It For You Wholesale. I've got like 60 pages left to go now. But I've, I've also been cracking on with these little um, ladybird... 
what are they? Just ladybird books. So there's going to be a full wrap up, uh, uh, like, the, well obviously these are all going to be in my monthly wrap up, but there's also going to be a special video just on these penguins, so I'm not going to tell you my thoughts on all of them. They range between a 3 out of 5 and a 4 out of 5 for me in ratings, most of them towards the higher end of that. And uh, yeah, I bought these in bulk on eBay because I'm then going to resell them for profit basically. Um, but I thought I'd read them while I had them as well, so uh, I read... Mr. Noah's Animals, The Monkeys and the Foxes. Learning with Mother, number book number four. A Ladybird fourth picture book. Tasseltip Plays Truant. Dancing Rhymes, this is part of the Learning with Traditional Rhymes series. Um, with that one I was kind of unlucky because all of the other ones sounded better than that. All of the other ones in that series, because I don't like dancing. Fun at the Farm, 4B. We have uh, Telling the Time by M.E. Gag. What a name. A first Did You Know book. A third Did You Know book. Where We Go, 5A. And Have A Go, 2B. So that's where I'm at. As I say, there'll be a full wrap up for all of these, so keep your eyes peeled for that. And uh, yeah, they'll also be on my eBay store, so I guess I'll link that below. Um, but yeah, I'm going to finish that Philip K. Dick and then I think next I'm going to read A Private Function by Alan Bennett. And I'm so close to the end of my Dickens now. I think I have about 20 pages to go of Hard Times um, as my bedtime book. So that is good. I'm also very, very tired. But I'm always tired these days. I think, oh, I've got toothache as well. And dentists aren't open at the moment, uh, apart from for like emergencies. They are reopening, or they might even have reopened, but I think it was like only 30% are open because there's a shortage of PPE. So that's a bummer, isn't it? Uh, yeah, I think that's about it. I think that's about it for you. Oh, oh, and I got something in the post today, which is a cool little gadget. Actually, my mom got me this t-shirt, which says, 2020, the year I celebrated my birthday in quarantine. And uh, I also got these little gadgets, which are like wireless, guitar transmitters so I should be able to I'm gonna give those a quick test later just to see if they work but in theory that means when I go to play open mics and stuff um, I won't be cabled in and can move around a bit we're at five five and my battery keeps dying on me while I'm filming yo I'm watching break from life he's recreating the 80s snooker shots of the decade uh, but the snooker is actually back on now, which is very exciting, so I can start watching that now. I pulled a massive thing hair out of my, ch out my chin earlier. I'm very tired today, but what else is new? It's currently 20 to 1 uh, on Saturday. It's a bit rough like that, there we go. Anxiety's not great. I had to, um, I've re-signed up with my doctor, so I have to wait two to three weeks now. Because they've changed how they do medication and stuff. So now for me to get my medication, I have to have appointments online, but I can't use any app other than their app, and that takes three weeks to register. I've actually been off my meds for like two months now, so I really need to get back on them because it's sending, sending my head in bad ways, you know. Like the other night I was just lying in bed, because I have really bad health and death anxiety, and so like the other, the other night I was just lying in bed, convinced I was dying and just felt terrible really. Oh, am I supposed to be interviewing Claire today? I think I'm interviewing my friend later. 4pm. Okay. That's alright. Uh, might do a little bit of music in a bit. Yeah, and just cracking on. So I've finished reading We Can Remember It For You Wholesale by Philip K. Dick. And now I'm reading A Private Function by Alan Bennett, which is uh, scripts and screenplays for the old crowd, A Private Function, Prick Up Your Ears, 102 Boulevard Houseman and The Madness of King George. Comes in about 300 pages. Um, and I'll probably watch these movies afterwards as well to see what I think of them. And uh, I've been writing an article for a client about the best sword and sorcery movies. And it's making me want to watch sword and sorcery. So I'm probably going to download a bunch of those. Uh, and we're watching some more Game of Thrones and stuff as well, obviously. So that's where we're at. Just watching Game of Thrones. Series 4, I think, now. You may notice I've had a move around. There's a reason for this. So, yesterday, uh, to be honest, I was getting ready for bed anyway. But, um... There was this big bang and, oh, cap, blimey. So yesterday there was this big bang and it turned out um, my power cable for my computer had exploded and it had also taken out the extension cable it was plugged into, which meant that I basically need to take everything out and put it all back again. So um, I did that this morning and that took like two and a half hours. 
and it's involved a bit of a move around in my living room but I've also been using it as a spring clean because my house to be honest has been very messy and unpleasant so um but yee I'm gonna need oi oi off my tabs um so so uh yeah so it's been good to at least get it done it just took taking a lot of time uh, I did my live stream earlier, so my new album came out today. I wasn't expecting it to. I don't really do like a big, I've been saying, making the joke, I don't make a big song and dance about it. But uh, yeah, I record albums at home and release them once they're ready, basically. So this is my fourth album. It's got 17 songs on it and it's on Spotify. You can also listen to it on iTunes, I think. And uh, I posted a music, like a lyric video, but like, it's basically lyric videos for all the songs on it. So it's just a video that you can listen to the album on. I posted that on my YouTube channel. And then, yeah, in my live stream today, I performed it back to back. Uh, I'm currently still reading a private... Oh, no, Biggie, I got your fl fluff on you. I'm currently still reading A Private Function by Alan Bennett. Um, I'm on the last screenplay of that now, The Madness of King George. Apparently, when it was a play, they called it The Madness of King George III. But they didn't want to release it as a movie like that because it was going to be released internationally. And there were worries that the American audience would think that they'd missed the madness of King George the first and the madness of King George the <laughs> second. Which, yes, that amuses me. But um, yeah, full review of that coming soon. Uh, I've tabbed it out to review it, so I'm just going to go and film those little bits now, I think. Hey, Biggie, you're very purry. Stop trying to steal my tabs. Look, I've got, I've got to go and review that, mate. I'm, I'm trying to review it. Yes, do you love the camera? Camera loves you. Yes. I think he's done. You done? Why are you so purry? You were in a mood with me earlier because I put that flea stuff on you had to be done though didn't it didn't it had to be done bye then thrones series five episode six now i don't know if i told you guys but i've moved my room around it's monday evening monday the 8th of june i turned 31 on thursday and uh sort of struggling with it a little bit I've got lots of work on at the moment so i'm doing a lot of overtime um, I finished reading Alan Bennett, A Private Function. That was very nice. I also finished reading my bedtime book, which was Hard Times by Charles Dickens. Um, probably like a 2.5 out of 5, maybe. It actually started out quite promising. The first 50 pages, yeah. And then it, it sort of rapidly went a bit downhill. It's not that it was bad, it was just dull, you know. Um, I kind of appreciate what he was doing. Um, I think it also would have helped if I'd had a better edition of it because the print was super tiny uh, and so like especially with like longer paragraphs it's really hard to read them anyway but then when the print's so tiny like it's not just you know what I mean like with like uh, I don't know someone like Virginia Woolf where a paragraph goes on for two pages you might have to like go back and reread little bits of it to make sure that you understand where the paragraph's coming from and where it's going you know to link the whole thing together which is fine yeah but the problem is, is you've got that going on in this book, and then it's in super tiny print as well. So also you have to keep going back and rereading the sentences, because you can't read the sentences because they're so the print's so small. So you misread things. So it's like I don't know. I feel like at least if it had been in a slightly higher print, like I I'm, I reckon this was like nine point font, maybe ten point, but yeah, something like twelve point or above or something. It, it just would have made it so much easier to read. Um, Having said that, I do like the discussions he had in it and stuff. And Dickens is like a master of reflecting his times as well. And I think he did that well here. So yeah, it's mixed feelings about it really. Um, I would say, I mean, I've read Oliver Twist a bunch of times as a kid and really liked that one. David Copperfield, I read like twice and don't don't particularly like. A Christmas Carol, fantastic. Um, probably my favourite of his things, to be honest. Well, Oliver Twist is up there as well. Um, and I haven't really read any more Dickens. So any suggestions, let me know. Um... I don't know. I think maybe his serialised stuff... I don't know. It is The good thing with his serialised stuff is that normally they have cliffhangers. Although I think Hard Times might have been serialised and it wasn't, wasn't great. So I don't know. We'll see. 
Uh, so yeah, I read that, and now I'm currently reading The Positronic Man by Isaac Asimov uh, and Robert Silverberg. It's one of his robots novels, and this is fantastic just for the same reason his robots novels are always fantastic, which is that they sort of deliberate on ethics and things like that, and uh, I just find it super fascinating to, um, to see Asimov's take on it all, really. And um, yeah, like, he's looking at the laws of robotics, I mean, The Positronic Man is a robot who slowly but surely is becoming more and more human. Uh, I would have just watched my full review of this because I think it's really well done, like the little plot points and the little beats in the storyline which make him slowly more and more human. So at first he's just questioning and like, he's always obeying the laws of robotics as well, um, but he's slowly becoming more and more human to the point at which that we then start asking what makes somebody human and what, and what makes somebody a robot, I guess, you know? Uh, really thought-provoking stuff. So yeah, that about brings us to the end of this week's reading vlogs. As always, thanks a lot for watching. Don't forget to let me know in the comments if you've read any of these books and if so, what you thought of them. Hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video. Hit the subscribe button for more and I will see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.